Well, greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's another day God has given to us where we can gather to read His Word. As Christians, we are people of integrity. The Bible says we are the salt of the world and we are the light. That's Matthew chapter 5. But are we still the souls of the earth as Christians? What is our life? Integrity is something that is fading away from Christians. But God has called us to be people who are blameless. Watch the sermon or listen to the sermon and I believe God is going to minister to you through his word. Today's title is Integrity, the fading ingredient in today's Christians. We shall read the Bible in the book of Job chapter 2. We shall read verse 3. It reads thus. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Well, today we are talking about integrity. Now, I want to define integrity as the quality of being honest, strong moral principles, and moral uprightness. That was an online definition. It is further uh, stated that it is a strong, consistent behavior of honesty, where honesty is defined as a refusal to lie, steal, and to deceive. Well, I came out with my simple definition that says, uh, uh, integrity is a lifestyle of honesty. Note that it's a lifestyle of honesty and doing what is morally right regardless of where you are and whom you are with. In the story or in the Bible text that we've just read, there is a conversation between God and Satan. They are discussing about someone who is Job. This is the second time they are having a conversation about Job. In the first conversation, we see it in chapter 1, where God just, uh, where the angels of the Lord had to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came to present himself before the Lord. And God asks the devil uh, or the Satan, he says, have you considered, that is uh, Job 1 verse 8, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless, upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. That is, the, uh, that is a, a Job. Now, after the conversation or during the conversation, the devil uh, wanted to go and attack. Actually, he requested permission to go and attack a job. There are things that we note from this. The first thing that we note is that the devil cannot just attack you in any way. He has to get permission from God, and God would allow him to go and attack you. So in other words, as his children, we are protected. Nobody can just come and bulldoze in your life. The other thing that we, I want us to note is that integrity is something that is not easy to find. The Bible says in the verse that we've just read, uh, there is no one on earth like him. We can argue that it means all the people of the world have no integrity. They are just living a life. They are God's people. There is no integrity. Integrity is not something that is common. It is not something that you will find in anyone. Not everybody who calls himself a Christian or herself a Christian has integrity. So this is a difficult subject. So in the text that we read, the devil is coming the second time. And now God is still proud of this uh, man of integrity who is Job. God is proud of people who stand a line of a life of blamelessness, people of integrity. In this uh, talk, uh, God says, have you considered my servant? That is verse 2 of Job 2. There is no one on earth like him. God is saying, is repeating those words. So in other words, after some time, after Job had lost everything, his livestock, his earnings, all that he has, he still 
maintained his integrity. That's why we said it's over, a it, we said in the definition, it's a lifestyle. Now, we learn that uh, God is saying there is no one like him. He is blameless, upright, a man who fears God. And now he's adding that his man shuns evil. Although he said even in the first time, the man shuns evil. He's adding this and he still maintains his integrity. He still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. The devil's mind, what is, was in the devil's mind was that Job remains a person of integrity just because God has given him help and has protected him. At first it was because he thought because uh, Job was rich. To those who God has blessed them who are rich, let me tell you, it doesn't mean that you have to get rich through corruption or let, just to let go of integrity. Job was rich being a man of integrity. He lost everything, became poor, maintained his integrity. Now he gets sick because the devil says, skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. All he has, including the integrity. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones and he will surely curse you to the face. But we see Job continuing in integrity until the wife said, verse 9, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. God I mean, Job maintained his integrity. He did not curse God. He maintained his life of purity. Now I want us to get deep down to this condition or this character that Job had, the character of integrity and the fear of the Lord. I want us to talk on the first term that God is saying about this man, that this is a blameless man. Now, a blameless person is someone who is innocent of wrongdoing. He cannot be blamed for anything. There is no blame you find on this man. He's just on the right side. Now, we learn that while Job was rich, he was blameless. Actually, blamelessness is what God requires from us as his children. If you read the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, God says to Abram, Abram, let me read the word as it is. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. So God demands blamelessness amongst his own. If we read Genesis 6 verse 9, we read of a man who was Noah, who is also regarded as a just man in his generation, a blameless man. So a person who is blameless is someone who is not found against the law. He's innocent of any wrongdoing. Where people have done something wrong, that person has not been part of that. Now, we have to also know that the conversation between the devil or Satan and God reveals that God sees people on earth, everyone he sees. He sees people of integrity and he sees those who are blameless. He knows all the people that are blameless. They are so, uh, it's so clear before him. God knows everything. Now, the other thing that God says about Job, he says he is blameless and an upright man. An upright man. Now, what is an upright man? These words, a blameless person and an upright man, they look similar. You can argue maybe in your, in your saying that they are similar. But I want to say from my perspective, they, aren't, they are not. Now, if we're talking of a person who is uh, upright, is someone 
who is careful to follow accepted rules of behavior and behaves trustworthy. So this person has a strict or shows strict regard for morally right things, for morale. Everything that is morally acceptable, that person is, is, is something that is ethically right, that person will be part of it. What we are saying about a person who is, a moral, who is upright is that even if the laws of the, the rules, they agree to whatever has been said, he will still stick to what is morally right. Now, as Christians, if we are saying someone is upright, it means even if the laws of, those country, of that country agree to whatever is said or whatever the laws that are put, the person would adhere to what the word of God says. If the world or the country or the government write a law that says we permit homosexuality or we permit this, we permit all this, an upright person will still say, because the Bible says no, I will not do that. So as Christians, we have to abide by biblical standards. One of the standards, uh, for just a common one, it says in Exodus 23 verse 8, do not take bribes. No bribes. Because they blind the discerning and pervert the words of righteousness. God said it. So as a Christian, if someone comes and gives you a bribe, you don't have to accept it because God has said you should not. It is a character of the people of God. So Job was a person who was upright. He will stick to what the word of God says rather than what man says. Now God further says, this man fears God. A man who fears God. Now, what is to fear God? We have to understand that fearing God has nothing to do like being scared of God. There are songs that we sing maybe in my African culture that say, God, you are so fearful that it brings, brings someone to be in scared of God. I'm afraid of God. But when we talk about the fear of, the, of, of God, we are actually not talking about that, but we are talking about reverence to God, knowing God, and respecting him in whatever you do. In other words, you regard him as your father. If I can talk in an earthly father uh, or an earthly parent, you don't want as a child you don't want to disappoint your parents you don't want to disappoint your family you want to do what is morally acceptable to them actually what is right you fear them if i do this what will my mom say or what will my father say so you always want to be on the right side of things deuteronomy 10 verse 2 12 i'm sorry said and now israel what does the lord your god ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. One of the things you have to fear God, loving God is doing his commandments. The fear of the Lord is doing things that align to his commands. That is the fear of the Lord. So Job was a, a person who respected and revered God and lived as God said. One example of a person who fears God or feared God, I'll just quote one prophet in the book of 2 Kings chapter 22. We read about the prophet Micah. Micah was a prophet of God. He stood by the laws or the words of God that he had given him. The Bible says Ahab wanted to go and fight uh, with, with the nation. When he wanted to fight, what he said actually was, let's get a prophet who will just prophet. Let the prophets come and prophesy and give us a direction on what God is saying. And actually all the prophets were called. Actually before the prophets were called, uh, there was a meeting in heaven where the, there was a discussion that who can we send to, 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 to confuse or to lie to Ahab? And then one spirit said, we will confuse and, and deceive the prophets such that they say he should go and fight. And all the prophets said that. And then he said, the man of God said, one of the, of the kings said actually, is there no prophet? Israel, are there is all the prophets? And Micah was found to be one who was not there. And they called him. And when he prophesied, actually he was hated because he would speak what God says. And definitely they were sure what he was going to say was going to be opposite of what they expected. 
So when he said his, the words, they said, no, you see, that's what we said. Because he said you shouldn't go. He sees the people scattered all over. Now, what we actually learn from this is that uh, Micah continued to speak the word of God. Regardless of I have the, the king saying, when, because he continued to go and fight after all the prophets have said all is okay. He said, I'll continue to fight, to go and fight. And so his, 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 his idea was take this Micah, put him in prison, and he says in verse 28, if, you ever ret if I return, okay, put this man in prison until I return. And then this, these are the words of Micah. He said, if you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken to me. And he said, take heed, all you people. So in other words, he said, let it come to pass, because God has said it. If you come back, so God hadn't spoken to me. But this was a man of God. As Christians, you have to stand the faith. We have to stand the ground, stand the position of God. This is what the Lord says. Don't, 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 don't go to the right or to the, to the left to please people or whatever. If it's unacceptable according to God, don't accept. If you want to be a person of integrity, a person uh, highlighted or listed uh, uh, like Job as a person of integrity, you have to stand your truth or stand on the word of God. The other thing, Job is defined as someone who shuns evil. The CEV, one of my favorite versions that talk, uh, that's simple in the word, is that then the Lord said, then the Lord asked, what do you think of my servant Job? No one on earth is like him. He is truly a good man who respects me and refuses to do evil. And refuses to do evil. That's what I want. And refuses to do evil. Now, a person of integrity is someone that refuses to do evil. He refuses to be part of something that is unacceptable. He doesn't end up in knowing that it is wrong, but he does not participate. He refuses. I like the thing that he refuses just saying, no, I cannot do it. I will not do it. Not because you will be beaten, not because you will be taken to prison, not because uh, whatever you will lose your job, but because it is against God's word. We as Christians are called to do that. I cannot do that. I cannot do this. I cannot do whatever. Why aren't you doing it? Because it's against God. I mean, people have asked, why aren't people engaging in sexual uh, relations before marriage? Why aren't you doing it? Because everybody is doing it. But a person who fears God will say, no, I won't do it. I won't. Why? Because it's against God's word. Now, the other thing that we talked about uh, integrity is that it's something that takes a long time or it's a long-term behavior. You cannot say I am a person of integrity just because uh, one day you, were, you refused to do something that was bad. No, no. You can't say then you are a person of integrity. People of integrity are known to, that this is their lifestyle. They cannot engage on this thing. They remain honest. They remain upright. They continue to shun evil every time. It is their lifetime. Christians should be people who are true pe before God, people who maintain the Christian standards. They always say no, even if you come to them after so many years to say, let's do what is wrong, they maintain it, they know. Because the word of God has not changed. Even God said to, 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 to the devil or to Satan in the text that we read, and he still maintains his integrity. There's a period of time now, and he still maintains. Not that he's a once-off thing. He still maintains it. He holds fast. He, continue to, he continues to, 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 to remain a person of integrity. The wife in Job 2 verse 9 says, Do you still hold fast? To your integrity. The wife knew that it was the husband's lifestyle to be a person of integrity. We lack men of integrity that will be known by their wives that these are men who fear God. 
These are men who are blameless. These are men who are upright. These are men who shun evil. You must be known as a person of integrity. Now, as a person of integrity, your life will be under a different cloud of things. There will be opposition to your integrity. The first thing is there will be attack. You will be attacked. The very example of Job is an attack. The devil will attack you. The devil attacked Job. You are a person of faith. Now, I would exhort you as a person of integrity to keep your faith in God because Habakkuk 2 verse 4 says, the just shall live by faith. Just live by faith. Know that the God that has called you, regardless of the attack, will go with you and put you through. Even if you don't get a reward on this earth, the reward of righteousness or of faithfulness, of integrity on this earth, you will get it on the other side. So just hold on. God is looking at you and continue to fear him and him alone. But there are things that also come with integrity. This include peace. Psalm 37 verse 37 says, Mark the blameless man and observe the upright for the future of, the man, of, of that man, a blameless man, is peace. A person who remains blameless has peace. His future is just peace. Do you want peace in your life? Be a blameless person. Be a blameless person. Always be on the right side of the law. Be an upright person. Do what is morally acceptable. Do what is right. And shun evil. There will be peace. Proverbs 10 verse, uh, sorry, Proverbs 28 verse 10 tells us another good about people of integrity. They inherit good. The Bible says, whoever causes the upright to go astray, is an, in an evil way, he will fall into the pit. Now this is the part I like. But the blameless will inherit good. The blameless will inherit good. If I can read from the CEV, it says, by leading a good person to sin, you dig a pit for yourself. But all who live right will have a bright future. Amen. It is people who live right, people of integrity, that live a good future. They have a bright future. This is a future that has, uh, assures them of a bright future here on earth and in heaven. God says to, uh, I'm sorry, Jesus says to the disciples in Matthew 6 verse 31 to 34 where they were concerned about food, clothing and everything. He said, do not worry about those things because the Father knows what you need and he will supply your need. Now, if we look at Job's life, if we look at Job chapter 42, you, you, from verse 12 to 16, you get to realize what God did for Job. He restored to him all his livestock. He restored livestock. He restored the riches and he restored the kids. He had other kids and the most beautiful ladies we are told in the Bible. In the whole world, God restored. That's the bright future. If you still remain as a person who fears God, a person of integrity, you are assured of a bright future. Young person, if you want a, a, a bright future, be a person of integrity. Man, an old person, a CEO, an employee, a business person, if you want a bright future in your business, be a person of integrity. The other thing that comes with people of integrity, they live a good and long life. You know, stress is one of the things that kills people. It's one of the, the, the things that kiss, kill a lot of people. People die because of stress. And one of the things that and, uh, causes stress is a life that is not a pure life. A life that is full of blame. You are blamed for, when you live a life that is not upright, a life that is not blameless. You, you do things, you engage in corruption. Those people are stressed because in your mind, you are thinking, if I do this, it will work this way. Or there is just something that goes wrong. It brings stress in your life. 
But if you're a person of integrity, you'll have a long life. Job 42 verse 16 says, After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his children and grandchildren for four generations. He lived long. If you're a person of integrity, you will live long. No stress, because you are a righteous person. Now you may be someone who has been confused, or maybe you've been someone who has engaged in this kind of evil. You have been someone who has engaged in corruption, and you don't live a blameless life. You don't live a life of integrity. What can you do? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's God. He's faithful and just to forgive us. Before you seek his forgiveness, you need to repent. Repentance is very important. That's why we have joined before Jesus Christ. You realize that what you've been doing is wrong. After realization, you have to seek for his forgiveness. God, please forgive me for my sins. Turn, if you are doing it, taking corruption, taking bribes, knowing, engaging in some things that are morally wrong. Today is the day to change your mind, to change your walk, and to stop doing things and start living a life of integrity and seek for his forgiveness. God is faithful and just to forgive you. Make it your habit or a lifestyle to live a life that fears God. Do what pleases God. Do what is in the word. The word of God is the word that directs us each and every day. It gives us the mind of God, what God expects and what he wants from us as human beings. It is also the Holy Spirit who is in us. John 16, 13 talks about the Holy Spirit. He says, however, when the spirit of truth has come, the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth and he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Whatever he hears from the Father. So in other words, the Holy Spirit aligns to the word, speaks the word, speaks what God says. He will guide you. And you'll know what you're not supposed to do, what you're not supposed to engage. Obey and listen to the Holy Spirit. As the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, it says, we are, it talks about Christians as the salt of the world and the light of the world. If our saltness as Christians has faded, what use do we have? If you are a Christian, you participate in corruption, what's the use? Don't even call yourself a Christian because you are no longer sold. If, if you engage in all the, the immoral things, things that you know that are unacceptable according to God's standards, and the Holy Spirit is telling you and has told you that what you're doing is wrong, but you proceed, what are you doing? As Christians, we don't have to be part of play, people who are, are not people of integrity. Let's maintain our integrity and be blameless, shun evil, and be upright. And that will please God, and he will brag about us, even before the devil, that you know, I know, have you seen Temgosi, or have you seen so-and-so? He's my child, he's a person of integrity. And the devil will try you, and will do whatever to see and test your integrity, but hold on to your to God, be a person of faith, and God will give you victory in whatever you're going through. That's what we have been called to as Christian, life of integrity. Well, that's the end of our sermon today. I believe God has ministered to you through his word. Now you understand that God requires that as Christians, we be integrity. Actually, he has said we are the salt of the world and we are the light. Let us shine. Let people see Christ in us. Let us bring the saltness, the nicety in the lives of people. Let them know that so and so is a person who fears God. Let us show the life of Christ in how we do things as Christians. Well, until we mature in Christ, may God bless you till we meet next time. Goodbye.